When the last airbender ended with the Avatar's triumph, it left fans wondering what happened to everyone afterwards. The sequel series, The Legend of Korra, told us a bit about Team Avatar's destinies. But the series never elaborated on what exactly they did after fulfilling their primary mission. So let's see what happened to our favorite characters after The Last Airbender ended and before The Legend of Korra began. Zuko It's evident that since he was the son of Lord Ozai, he became the new Fire Lord. But that's pretty much all we know about the redeemed prince. Didn't he have a daughter, Izumi, who took the reins after him? Yes, she briefly appeared in The Legend of Korra, yet it was never mentioned who her mother was, and that still remains a mystery. But then again, did you know that when Zuko became the Fire Lord, his first significant act involved sending searching parties to find his mother? Really? Yes, you can find the story about it in the graphic novel The Search. Zuko knew that his mother was alive, but was exiled from the kingdom for trying to help her son, so he was eager to find her. Zuko's journey took him to one of the Fire Nation's most spiritual places, known as the Forgetful Valley. There, he found an ancient spirit called the Mother of Faces and learned that Ursa, his mother, was there, along with her lover, Norin, who was also exiled by the Fire Nation. He also found out that to ease her suffering, Ursa and Norin asked the Mother of Faces to erase Ursa's memories so she could forget the pain of losing her children. Zuko then asked the spirit to restore his mother's memories, so her and her new family, she had a daughter with Norin, could come back to the Fire Nation and live happily there. And now, moving on to Zuko's sister, Azula. Wait, what is she doing here? She's not Team Avatar, never was. I know, Mr. Fully Lover, but she was still an essential character of the series, so we can't just forget her like a nightmare, although sometimes she actually was a nightmare. One of the most mentally unstable people in the whole Avatar universe, she was confined to an asylum after the Hundred Year War ended. But Zuko released her at some point and allowed her to accompany him on his quest for their mother. Why would he do that? Azula blackmailed him because she burned the letters Ursa wrote to her son while in exile, but read them first and said that she'd tell him what they said if he took her with him. Even then, it probably wasn't the best decision Zuko ever made. Precisely. Along the way, Azula was tortured by hallucinations of her mother and put the whole gang in danger several times. She eventually escaped and disappeared, giving up her attempts to overthrow Zuko from the Fire Lord throne. In her last conversation with Zuko, she also said that she wanted to show everyone that he's a tyrant, just like his father was. Once, she even made him use ruthless and authoritarian measures to save kidnapped kids. But she didn't really succeed in that, and at some point, she disappeared completely. Thank goodness, I say! Let's rather talk about Zuko's more benevolent relative, Mr. Scoffer. Uncle Iroh! He wasn't a Team Avatar member per se, but he still fought for the right cause. I was so excited to see Uncle Iroh dwelling in the spirit world in The Legend of Korra! Weren't you, Mr. Scoffer? Yes, but have you ever questioned, Mr. Fully Lover, how he got to the spirit world in the first place? And what he did after regaining the ability to peacefully drink tea and play Pai Show? To be honest, I've never really thought about it. Well, you should have! And actually, you won't be surprised to find out that after the defeat of Lord Ozai, Uncle Iroh retired and decided to run a tea shop full time. He called it the Jasmine Dragon Tea Shop and served his favorite drink there. Iroh also served briefly as an interim Fire Lord while Zuko set out in search of his mother. And during this period, he did something a Fire Lord normally wouldn't do, but at the same time, something that we should have expected from him. He declared a National Tea Appreciation Day in the Fire Nation. Yes, that's the Uncle Iroh we know and love. There came a point in Iroh's life, though, when he realized that it was time for him to leave the mortal world. So he left his physical body behind and traveled to the spirit world, where he kept on doing what he loved the most, arranging tea parties and drinking tea. Well, he deserved it. He did so much for his nephew and the whole world. And you should know one more important thing about Iroh, Mr. Fully Lover. He met Aang and gave him some valuable advice, just like he later did to Korra in the World of Spirits. Now that you mention it, I kind of recall that he hinted at it when he met Korra. Yes, you are right. 
And yet, what exactly Aang and Iroh were talking about remains a secret. Now that we've talked about all the firebenders, let's proceed to... Toph. She was so tough! My favorite character ever! Many Avatar fans will agree with you, Mr. Fully Lover. Toph was still alive in The Legend of Korra. But even then, she didn't share much about her past. We know that she was a huge help in defeating Lord Ozai, and that she was the first metal bender ever! That's right, and that is why, after the Hundred Year War was over, she decided that the best thing she could do for society was to start a metal bending academy. There, she passed on her most outstanding achievement to other Earthbenders. But wait, because the Academy wasn't the only first ever thing she launched. What else did she do? When the Republic City was created, Toph became the very first chief of police there. And she was the one who helped maintain order during that period of change. I also know that Toph was too tough of a woman to handle for just one man. And that's why she was married twice and had two daughters from two different guys. You remember it correctly. A guy named Kanto was Lin's father, but Toph never revealed anything about him to her daughter. Lin even held a grudge toward her mother for that. And Su Yin, she never really asked anything about her dad. But I heard that there's a fan theory about Sokka being her father. Do you remember that Toph had a crush on him when they first met? Yes, but it's hard to believe that they were romantically involved. A theory is just a theory. Anyway, both of Toph's daughters continued their mother's legacy. Lin replaced her in the position as the chief police, while Su Yin, being a powerful metal bender, continued imparting this art to others. Yes, I remember her. She was the founder and leader in that metal city. Yes, it was called Zhao Fu. That's pretty much all we know about Toph, so let's discuss the next indispensable member of Team Avatar, Sokka. Just a young, audacious boy when the last airbender began. He turned into a skillful swordsman and a great warrior by the Hundred Year War. Do you know what he did after it was over, oh all-knowing Mr. Scoffer? Of course I do! In the United Republic of Nations, created by Aang and Zuko, Sokka served as the representative for the Southern Water Tribe, and he was also a chieftain of his tribe. Along with Katara and Aang, he also took an active part in the Harmony Restoration Movement to remove Fire Nation colonies in the Earth Kingdom. Sokka survived Aang, which means that he got to meet the next Avatar, Korra. He knew her as a child and once even saved her life! Oh, wow! What happened? The Red Lotus, a group of powerful benders who wanted to assassinate all the nation's leaders and end the cycle of Avatars, tried to kidnap her when she was five. And Sokka, along with Zuko and some others, prevented it and saved the little girl. Oh, this is all so exciting! But didn't you forget to tell us about the main characters? Patience, my friend. I'm getting to them now. Katara and Aang. Finally! Everyone knows that they got married sometime after the Hundred Year War and gave birth to three kids, including Tenzin, who was prominently featured in The Legend of Korra. Both Katara and Aang did a lot to restore peace among the nations. And it's obvious that Aang also wanted to restore his own nation that was wiped out. To do this, he founded Air Acolytes. It was a group of non-airbenders committed to learning the cultural and spiritual ways of the air nomads. Gradually, they repopulated the air temples, where future airbenders could live and train. I also know that Aang made it his mission to find the remaining breeds of sky bison and wing lemurs. He housed them all and helped their species recover. Why am I not surprised that this is the fact you know, Mr. Fully Lover? Aang got to do a lot in his lifetime, but it didn't last long. Due to being frozen in an iceberg for 100 years, his physical body became weak quite early, and he passed away at a relatively young age when he was 66. Katara survived him and eventually became Korra's waterbending teacher. And she also helped her recover from the ordeal she had to overcome in The Legend of Korra. Yes, Katara was capable of doing this because she was a master healer. It was even said that she was the best in the world. And, as you might expect, she was also a great mother to her three children. Aren't you excited to finally know what happened to Team Avatar and Azula? And how they all fit into the events of The Legend of Korra? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to Cartoon Junkies!